So, let us look at just some uh, examples of that. I think that we have uh, now p bigger than or equal to 1, you can analyze that. Like this one, I said uh, n n square. So, eventually, if I numerator I call as a n, denominator I call as b n, right? then eventually it looks like n over n square 1 over n, the limit looks like to be equal to 0. right? So, I can try to apply limit comparison test here. So, find out the limit okay, of uh, no, I think there is something wrong here. right? Oh, I should not compare n with n square. Let us <laughs> yeah. you see if you directly you try to compare numerator and denominator then you will end up into problem because you do not know either of them are convergent or not. You understand what I am saying? You should not take a n to be equal to n plus 5. I do not know that series is divergent, so you cannot help it. So, this is my series. It looks like 1 over n, right? n over n square, it looks like 1 over n. So, let us try to compare this with 1 over n ratio a n by b n. So, a n is equal to this, b n is 1 over n. What is a n by b n? So, a n by b n that will be n square plus 5 n, right? 1 over n, b n was 1 over n, a n. So, and that limit is 1 over n square, a n square that will be limit will be equal to 1. So, limit of a n by b n is equal to 1, which is not 0. 1 over n is divergent. So, this also will be divergent. So, that is what I said. If I look at the in a general term, it looks like 1 over n. It looks like 1 over n and 1 over n is not convergent. So, this series should not be convergent and that we are formalizing by comparing with a n by b n limit of that. Eventually, it looks like 1 over n. Okay? That is how your thinking should go. So, that is divergent. n square n to the power 4, what does it look like? It looks like 1 over n square. So, I should compare it with 1 over n square. Same technique, right? a n equal to this, b n equal to 1 over n square. When you divide a n by b n, the limit will be equal to right? 3 n to the power 4 and so on. So, what will be the limit? That will be, what is the limit of that? It will be 3 by 1. So, that will be equal to 3. right? Is it okay? It will be equal to 3 by uh, 1 here. So, that will be equal to 3. So, limit is not equal to 0. right? So, convergence of 1 over n square will imply convergence of this series which is 3 n square minus 2 n plus 4 divided by that. right? Eventually, it looks like 1 over n square. Yes? Yeah, but how do you formalize that? That is the in, that is how you should think that the sequence general term looks like 1 over n square. So, eventually it should look like 1 over n square and that is what is the limit comparison test says that justification for that is limit comparison test. So, look at a n divided by b n, a n is this, b n is equal to 1 over n square, compute the ratio and take the limit that tells you eventually how does this a n compare with b n. right? So, that is a rigorous way of saying the same thing. So, that is con convergent. Okay. So, here is uh, a caution saying that in all these things you have to think of who with the what you should compare. right? you have to make a sort of a guess that I should compare it with this by looking at power up and down and so on and then only compare. right? So, these tests are not intrinsic tests. 
once again i am bringing that word intrinsic remember we use the word intrinsic when we looked at convergence of sequences finding a sequence of a limit exists a sequence is convergent you require the limit which is not given to you but saying is koshi i don't require anything outside i only have to analyze whether the terms are coming closer to each other or not so koshiness is an intrinsic property and the beauty is it is equivalent to saying the limit exists now here root test uh, sorry uh, comparison test and all these things ask me to guess something outside the given knowledge that i have to find some one like 1 over n square 1 over n and then compare them right but can i have a test which does not require me to do that kind of a thing by looking at the series itself i can say something so there are tests possible like that so let us look at uh, that is called the ratio test so you are given the sequence an look at the series an so look at the limit of an plus 1 divided by an the next term its ratio with the previous one look at that ratio why limit eventually so take a limit of this that is l if l is less than 1 then the series is convergent bigger than 1 it is divergent and equal to 1 is the same kind of problem that it can converge it can diverge so what could be a proof of this till now what are the techniques we know we only know geometric series is convergent right the compare and then we knew that 1 over n square is convergent and then uh, the comparison test gave me something for bigger than 2 and uh, less than 1 uh, and 1 over np right so those are known facts already okay and here l is equal to this limit so let us analyze what is the meaning of limit means here if l is the limit of this ratio that means what and l is less than 1 l is less than 1 so what does it mean here is 0 here is 1 and here is somewhere l i should uh, one should point out uh, it is strictly less than 1 okay so it is not equal to 1 it is something in between that means what that means after some stage all the terms of the sequence must be close to l so let us say they are here okay so uh, So let us uh, l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon. So for every epsilon bigger than zero, such that l minus epsilon less than l less than l plus epsilon, still still less than one. Let us keep it less than one. Okay, is it possible? Okay, because l is between zero and one. So so for there exists some n not such that. An plus one by An is less than L plus epsilon, and bigger than L minus epsilon for every n bigger than n not. Right? Is it okay? Definition of limit. Now, see what is happening is it says. look at this part it says an plus 1 by an is less than l plus epsilon that means an plus 1 is less than l plus epsilon times for every n bigger than n not 
right. So, this is telling me how much a n plus 1 is in comparison with a n right and this thing is less than 1 right this is less than 1. So, now let us try to use it inductively this is for any n right n naught onwards. So, what will happen a n so let us take equal to a n n equal to n naught. So, I got a n naught plus 1 is less than l plus epsilon of a n naught right is bigger than n naught. Let us go to the next step a n naught plus 2 will be less than l plus epsilon a n naught plus 1 right, but a n that is already less than. So, it is l plus epsilon to the power 2 a n naught right. So, what is happening? So, what will happen to the k n plus k? So, if we look at a n naught plus k that will be less than l plus epsilon to the power k of a n naught inductively right. So, what we are saying is the the terms of the given sequence a n naught from some stage onwards are bounded by this times a constant that is fixed thing a n naught and what kind of. So, if I call this as b b to the power k what is b it is less than 1. So, that is geometric series. So, that is convergent. So, I was saying a k a n s are less than b n s and b n s are geometric series from some stage onwards. So, that is convergent. So, that implies a n will be convergent right. So, that is how this is useful. It says if l is less than 1 the series is convergent. If l is bigger than 1 what will happen? A n by b n will stay away from 1 on the right hand side. So, a n by b n will be bigger than l minus epsilon which is bigger than 1. So, when inductively again powers. So, it will be a geometric series with common ratio bigger than 1. Again comparison test will give me that this should be divergent right. So, that will say the series is divergent. When it is equal to 1 either thing is possible one can give examples right. So, definition of the limit of the ratio a n plus 1 and a n is falling back upon comparison tests and geometric series right. The proof involves writing the limit and using the fact that the geometric series is convergent if the common ratio is less than 1 ok. So, that gives us the result. So, we have already seen that. So, you can write it out the proof a n plus 1 is less than that, that is less than 1 and so on. L bigger than 1 right. So, it will keep on increasing comparison. So, that is is bigger than 1 you can ok. okay. So, let us look at uh, yeah let us look at some applications of it simple applications a n is 1 over 2 n minus 1 it looks like 1 over n anyway right. So, I do not have to really do anything just compare it with that, but let us take the ratio right the ratio is equal to with 1 over n or ratio of this itself that limit is equal to 1. So, divergent ok. So, as we guessed you can compare it with that if you like either way. So, limit is equal to 1 ok. So, divergent 
a n plus 1 divided by a n if the limit is equal to 1 then the series is divergent right that is what we less than 1 it was convergent ok. Pardon? L strictly less than 1 convergent because in the geometric series common ratio strictly less than 1 only will give you convergence when common ratio is equal to 1 that gives you divergence. One, so this is not less strictly less than one. Which one? Yes, so here it is divergent. That's all. Limit is one, but it's divergent compared to that. Which theorem? No, no, we are giving examples that when it is equal to 1, I th anything can happen. For the third case, right, I said L equal to 1, anything can happen. Strictly less than 1, it is convergent. Strictly bigger than 1, it is divergent. So, in this case, it is strictly, uh, it is equal to 1, right, but if you apply the comparison test, right, it is divergent. So, equal to 1, but divergent. You can look at uh, n square. Similarly, the ratio will be equal to one, but it is convergent, right? If you look at n square, the ratio will be equal to one. It is convergent. So either is possible in that case. We are not applying the theorem, but we are saying that counter examples for the third case. Okay, right? Okay. So there is something called the root test. Is something similar to the <coughs> the ratio test. It says a n's are non negative, look at the nth root, look at the limit. If that exists less than 1 is convergent, bigger than 1 or infinity it is divergent equal to 1, anything can happen. Basically, eventually analyzing the limit and bringing it back to something that is already known, right? that is the idea of the proof. Okay. So, if limit of a n is to be 1 over n that is L is less than 1 then what happens? It should stay in a neighborhood of 1, right? it should stay in a neighborhood of limit is 1. If the limit L is less than 1 it should stay on the left side of 1, right? that means what a n raised to power 1 over n will be less than something which is less than 1. So, when you raise the power, so a n will be less than that small quantity which is less than 1 raised to power n. Again geometric series will convergence. Right? So, basically uh, definition and geometric these are giving these tests. Okay? Similarly, for l bigger than 1 again geometric series the common ratio bigger than 1 will be divergent equal to 1, we have to give examples to illustrate that. right? So, a n will be less than alpha to the power n, while alpha is less than 1, I said. So, that will be geometric series and convergent. And similarly, uh, by the comparison test and comparison with geometric series. Okay? When bigger than 1, a n will be bigger than on the right hand side of 1. So, l minus epsilon will be bigger than 1. So, power a n will be bigger than L minus epsilon raised to power n that is bigger than 1. So, again comparison will give you it is divergent. Okay? So, basically uh, you can give examples. Okay? So, I think uh, these examples you should study and uh, try to do it because I can explain examples and it will be okay. You will nod your head yes it is okay and all that, but you should understand uh, why. Okay. Okay. So, look at the examples when the limit is uh, less than 1, bigger than 1 and so on. Um, I do not know whether uh, okay. yeah, the limit of this quantity is equal to E. Did we prove that in the tutorial classes or something? Limit of 1 over 1 plus n. Okay. 
or n plus 1, 1 plus 1 over n raised to power n that limit is equal to the number e, Euler's number. So, that is being used here actually. That is the interesting thing. I do not know, was it part of a tutorial 1 plus 1 over n raised to power n that limit exists is equal to e. Anyway, uh, so that is being used here because that is actually the definition of the number e. E is a number uh, which is called Euler's number and the same which comes in the exponential function also e, e raised to power 1 exponential of 1 is the same number as this. So, there are connections I think let me not go into that. Those who are interested read see the slides and try to figure out why it is same number as that if you are interested in mathematics. right? as such uh, unity uh, air coming here coming there both are same or not okay so i think uh, that is a root test there is a integral test i will not discuss much about this because this is something uh, is not difficult but anyway it's a, uh, it one to infinity that is a improper riemann integral kind of a thing so let f be a continuous function from one to infinity evaluate the value of f at the point n and if that is a n then the series and this integral either both converge or both diverge. You remember we had that defined what is called the convergence of a improper integral right. So, this relates with improper integral um, yeah I think let me not go into the proof of this is easy, but let me not go into the proof and let me not just statement uh, of this. This you can uh, look at uh, to apply with something like function being 1 over x to the power p and uh, p between 1 and 0 and then you show it is a improper integral is convergent and then you see how remember I said between 0 and 1, 1 over n to the power p we did not analyze. right? we analyze only when equal to 1, 1 over n or bigger than that. So, this is the integral test gives you, but that requires the fact that this is a convergent improper integral. right? So, one requires that. So, let me uh, probably uh, sum it up what we have done today. How do you analyze uh, testing or convergence of a series? The general rule is check first of all whether the nth term goes to 0 or not if it does not go to 0, it is not convergent. So, proceed only when it goes to 0, analyze convergence. You can apply integral test. If it looks like a rational function, something divided by something that n square divided by something, then uh, the limit comparison test may work. Okay? And uh, for the standard series, you can try to compare it with geometric series, p series and so on. Ratio tests works when there are factorials and powers coming, but because when you divide, powers will try to cancel it out. right? So, you should try that. Root test is useful uh, when nth root of uh, somewhere it is coming. Okay? So, the general rules kind of, not rules, general hints of how to analyze convergence of series. So, we have looked at only today for non negative terms series, right? but we saw one uh, series alternate series was convergent. right? So, and if a series is not convergent, you can always take the absolute values each term and see whether that is convergent or not. So, there is something called absolute convergence of a series and uh, series for alternating terms. So, we will look at it in next time. Okay.